Casual Geographic. I'm excited for this. Is one. like, you know, there are so many nature channels that I watched over the years. Um, it, it brings an energy that I've never seen to the table because there were always these like uh, nature documentary type dudes that tried to make it cool. And funny. And even Steve Irwin, you know, he did his thing. Yeah. Of course, he was totally unique, but he wasn't like Satire. with the times, like you know, speaking the language that we were Witty. speaking. You know, yeah, it, it, he was still an old person. Who did old person things like when we were kids he was like 30 some years old you know like he wasn't a younger person yeah. with like a fresh perspective and dialogue about these things for sure he was just a wild man who was the other dude that did the disney channel are you talking about jeff corwin jeff corwin I fucking hated you him. know like as a kid because he tried to be cool i yeah. was like screw this guy like i hate him but then i would go and watch the the wild crafts the zaboomba foo yeah yeah but casual geographic kind of feels like one of your friends or like somebody you know is just at the bar chilling talking shit about yeah. animals but it's informed and sure. it's witty and it's fun this so one i always have a, are you ready for yeah. this one well it says how an island created the world's ugliest monkey i feel like y'all are calling me out now I didn't I, come up on an island, but come on. I feel like the ugliest monkey that I can think of is those ones with the big old noses. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I think there's some kind of like a baboon. Maybe yeah. they're the ones with the red butts or the blue butts. The red butt. Blue blue chest. Blue. They got blue on well, them somewhere. Are baboons monkeys? This always confuses me. So there's apes and monkeys, and monkeys have tails and apes don't. And those think, have tails, so those are monkeys. I don't know. I'm confused as all hell right now. I do know that we supposedly descended from monkeys, and that would explain why I'm ugly as shit. Oh so, <laughs> let's, let's check this video let's out. Let's get to it. Three, two, one, go. on your head. Why? Oh, no reason. Except you gave me the ugly. You know, when they say survival of the fittest, it's more like survival of, if it works, it works. Cause they didn't mean fit as in abs, arms, and selling supplements on Instagram. No, they mean fit as in like, how good are you at staying alive long enough to make more of yourself? For example, you won't see a turtle with a Gymshark sponsorship, yet a mobile boulder has been running the same playbook for a good 200 million years. And it's on islands where evolution really goes off one. You see, the thing is, because islands have more of a cap on how many people can be alive at once, islands have more specialist species than generalists. It's kind of like the job market, the more competitive it gets, the more DMs you get from people pushing Forex or overpriced under quality knives. So it makes sense for the oldest island in the world to have the most creatively questionable creatures on its roster. India divorced itself from the continent of Africa an estimated 150 million years ago, and then proceeded to lose custody of its love child about 60 million years after that, and Madagascar has been on its own ever since. Meaning its residents have had nearly 90 million laps around the sun of character <laughs> development to figure life out. Which is how we ended up with the ugliest monkey in the world. Matter of fact, the first time scientists saw it, they legitimately thought it was a squirrel nature tried redrawing strictly from memory. It wasn't until about 100 years later that scientists realized that the I.I. is actually a primate, meaning this dehydrated gremlin is closer to you than to any squirrel. Although it's not a monkey, like I said, it's actually a lemur. Although I don't blame them for taking one look at it and being confused. The I.I. is built like an identity crisis. It has the body of a monkey, the ears of a bat, the bushy tail of a fox, the dental plant of a rodent, and hands that would have gotten it burnt at a stake and sailed. Even its name is more complicated than needs to be. Most people say that the II's government came from the Malagasy phrase, I don't know. As in they were so disgusted by a fetal golem that they didn't even want to utter its name. Imagine being so aesthetically upsetting that the people naming you decide you're not even worth an identity. Like, like the name on your wiki is pretty much, I don't know. 
the ugly stepchild of Madagascar only really makes sense once you see what it does for a living. Form is function, and the I.I. looks like animal casserole Get because they're specialists on steroids. Their favorite foods are the grubs that Lion King did a really good job of making actually look good. They use those huge bat ears to listen as they drum on pieces of wood. Yeah. And once they hear a hollow spot, they use that beaver type overbite to drill through the wood. All while using that tail for balance as they do this in complete darkness. Which they have to since the I.I. is the world's largest nocturnal primate. Which is a title that really means next to nothing since they're still small enough to have to only be active when the sun goes down and so do their chances of being put out of commission by birds or prey or the biggest opt to lemur life. But being the largest means they're not the only nocturnal primates out there and arguably not even the ugliest because the tarsier legitimately no, looks so like it's cute. having an internal mental health crisis. But like with the I don't know, form meets function and this perked out primate having the biggest eyes relative to the body size of any <laughs> animal means they can take in as much light as possible. This means this pocket sized primate can hunt in total darkness <laughs> while also avoiding being snatched up and turned into calories themselves. Even though they look fundamentally disturbed by their own existence. Maybe that's why they pull their own plugs in captivity. I eyes don't have to factory reset themselves because there's plenty of people that'll do it for free. That's because I didn't mention the weirdest thing about them. I eyes have six fingers and one of them's three times longer than all the others. And it also happens to be their middle finger. So when this gremlin goes for groceries, it taps on trees like a Jehovah's Witness going door to door. And it's after using those never not growing teeth to invite themselves in that they use that demonic digit to scoop the grubs Yo, out. And if you've ever held an I eyes middle finger, you've both lived my dream and probably thought it was broken. When in fact, that finger has a ball and socket joint that essentially gives it 360 movement. Basically, the way you can move your wrist and your hand is the way this rehab chipmunk moves its finger. That finger is great for grabbing grubs, but also for another favorite pastime of theirs. That pastime being mucophagy, meaning eye eyes might not choose their nose, but they sure as hell pick them. And that oh, finger's long enough to pass through the nostrils shit. and reach all the way down its throat. And despite the gag this video gave me that I'm gonna have to edit out, it's not painful for the eye eye, just to anyone watching. We don't really know exactly why they do this. Some scientific evidence suggests that eating it helps boost our immune system, but honestly, my social history is close enough. I'm really not trying to go down that rabbit hole. But you see, this is the kind of stuff only millions of years of character development in an isolated area can lead to. I mean, that's exactly how we got the ugliest frog in the world. And I know beauty's Jesus. subjective, but I defy you to try and defend it. This frog has a name that sounds like I'm trying to test guidelines and it's found only one place in the world. Oh. In the South American Lake Titicaca, which it's named after. <laughs> and it's because of where it lives that this frog looks like if Kermit ever snapped and went full Buffalo Bill. Lake, I'm not gonna say it again, is the world's <laughs> highest elevated lake at 12,500 feet, where there can be only a third of the oxygen you'd expect at sea level. So because oh. frogs can breathe through their skin, the frog's extra post-liposuction looking skin means extra <laughs> surface area to absorb oxygen. Which is what makes it the ultimate specialist, since the skin that lets it live up here would almost certainly get it packed packed up and put on a shirt anywhere else. Ooh. Which is also why if you google scrotum frog, two yeah, things will happen. Like you'll get the struggle toads bro. mugshot and you'll end up on the same watch list as me. Unfortunately, despite looking <laughs> like a grown man's hairless undercarriage, the frog with the name often gets deprived from life by people using it for food and medicine. I eyes also have to worry about getting turned into past tense by people, but for almost the opposite reason. You see, I was kidding with the whole gremlin thing. I, I actually think they're kind of cute. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and according to like locals, I eyes don't behold in nothing. Despite being a lemur that literally identifies as a woodpecker, locals were so terrified of it that they would murk it on sight. And here's where their biggest flex becomes a curse. Because according to folktales, not only was this primate a harbinger of evil, if it ever pointed that freakish middle finger at you, you might as well lease the casket since it meant you'd be a was sooner than later. One myth even said that if you didn't go out of your way to sign its obituary first, the I.I. would break into your house and relieve you from life by stabbing you through the heart in your sleep. Obviously, oh it's not God. even close to being true, but imagine being such an assault on the eyes that people decide that oxygen is wasted on you. It's the opposite of pretty privilege, it's like a disheveled disadvantage. And this homely handicap is a big reason why the I.I. is endangered. But another big reason is due to habitat loss. Because despite being in the same weight class as like a laptop, eye eyes are solitary and require all the space that comes with it. And while males can tolerate territory overlap, females ain't having none of that. Especially since eye eyes, like most lemurs, are female dominated. That includes ringtails, by the way. So King Julian, you know what? I'm gonna leave it at that. And because we're really not that much different, males will run the most outrageous of fades for females, even resorting to levels of erection deflection by pulling males off females while they're actively mating. Which is probably why male eyes will often lock into their females in the process and they can stay stuck that way for up to an hour. This ensures that the male swimmers make it to the pool party no matter how much the competition tries to run interference. Because ultimately, like I said, eye eyes aren't that much different from us. They have two eyes, a mouth, a desire to breed, and a pair of nipples just like we all do. Except you might not notice them because eye eye nipples oh aren't in the neighborhood God. where you'd expect them to be since eye eye nipples are closer to the groin than they are to the chest. Because that honestly makes no less sense than anything else about a booger eating, swiss army finger wielding prosimian with a child lock for its junk. Well, not an actual child lock. That. 
That'd be weird. But as far as weird goes, it might not even be the ugliest primate on the planet. I say that because the Ugly Animal Preservation Society, yes, that's a real thing, had a vote on the most aesthetically displeasing animal out there, and the I.I. didn't even make the top five. You want to know who did? Yeah. This guy right here, it. the mascot of if it works, then f it, it works. Cause scientists believe that a nose big enough for its own license plate and parking space is actually used to help catch a female's attention. As in really? one female decided she liked the way <laughs> big nose is hanging. Now this monkey's entire personality is a facial flesh sack that I'm probably gonna have to censor. That might be the weirdest thing about them, but it's not the only. Cause Schnoz monkey also uses raging erections as a sign of aggression and a threat. And if you don't believe me, pause this video and Google it. I'll wait. You probably won't see them in zoos, and the internet says it's because their specialized diet is too difficult to replicate. But I really think it's because no zoo wants to end up with a lawsuit because a proboscis monkey felt insecure and decided to mentally scar a child. You probably won't see one of these either, but for different reasons. The snub-nosed monkey is like the shadow clone of the proboscis. Instead of a massive flex on its face, it instead looks like it could unlock Voldemort's phone. These monkeys, especially the golden snub nose, have to live in the cold, mountainous forest of Asia, and it's believed that the snub nose helps prevent it from getting frostbite. And yeah, in typical evolution fashion, the monkeys with a no knows got to live long enough to pass it down and the ones that didn't well you don't see them around for a reason and like i said in some cases we're really no better than them since black snub nosed monkeys will actually use natural lipstick as a way to get attention except with them it's actually the guys whose lips get the kylie jenner treatment and the males with the biggest and brightest lips get the best pick of partners red lips are one thing but one monkey managed to take it even further for so long we didn't know why the wakari cosplays as red skull with a receding hairline turns out just like with the snub nosed lips and this monkey's proboscis it's what beauty standards in nature look like Scientists now believe that the bright red color correlates to health and reproductive fitness. We know this because when a wakari gets sick with like a malaria parasite or something, its face will get so pale it'll almost be white. Aww. So the redder in the face this crimson chimp is, the healthier he looks and the more females he gets to poke. But the thing with specialist species is, they usually only live in one place and they're usually also endangered. The I.I. is no exception, in fact at one point we thought they straight up got discontinued back in the 1930s until we accidentally rediscovered them over 20 years later. And today there's believed to be anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 of them in stock. Which isn't great, but they're still doing better than the ugliest animal in the world. Cause you remember how I said Nosebee over here was voted in the top 5? Well you wanna know who was number 1? It was actually the Blobfish. Oh. The fish that looks like a deflated whale fetus auditioned as a pinata. But honestly, I don't think there's an animal we did dirtier than the Blobfish. The streets probably didn't tell you, but this is what they're supposed to look like. It's just that their address happens to be in the bottom of the ocean. So to survive pressure that would turn any one of us into a chalk outline, the Blobfish has few muscles, even fewer bones, and no swim bladder. They're basically just a pile of waterproof gelatin with eyes. And uh, you remember the whole formis function thing? Well, if the blobfish looked more like a regular fish, it would instantly flatline and have its insides forced out of its mouth. The problem is, when blobfish get caught in trawling nets and get pulled up, the same body that spent millions of years evolving to live in the crotch of the ocean basically falls apart in itself on land. So uh, yeah, we basically memed the soul deficient corpse and called it ugly. And in their defense, if the most attractive person you know got airdropped into the blobfish's neighborhood, no amount of personality would save their face from what the water pressure would do to it. We don't know how many blobfish are left in the world, but consensus says it's something like 400. So yeah, the blobfish definitely got screwed with the whole ugliest animal title. That dishonor definitely should have gone to this thing. It's a Damascus goat and like the blobfish, evolution didn't hold this animal. We did. Thanks to selective breeding, we created a goat that looks almost cute as a baby, but then grows up into the steed of Satan. So basically, we pugged a goat. But these goats are incredibly valued for their milk and meat, and getting a purebred one will set you back a good $5,000 or more. Oh my God. Not only that, but this one was named the most beautiful goat in the world in 2008. So I guess the moral here is, no matter how rough you might think you look, you're always going to be of value to somebody. Even if you look like you took a steel chair to the chin. And even if you look like something God made on a deadline. But that's going to do it for this video. Make sure to check out my TikTok and Instagram for more consistent content while you're waiting for the next video. And if you'd like to support this incredibly questionable content beyond just subscribing, my Patreon's also gonna be in the description. But as always, never feel like you have to give anything. That aside, make sure you drink water, hug your mother, be glad your lady poker doesn't have a child lock on it, and I'll see y'all in the next one. It is so ugly. Oh. <clears throat> give Dobby a sock. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. I would be okay with it until it done the nose thing, and then you gotta get out of here. When it started picking its boogers, you'd be done? No, when it started doing like a fucking mummy, whatever the fuck it's called. What, what is that called? <clears throat> when they embalming? go No, they go in there. It's not embalming. Yeah, the nose brain thing, like the mummies, they go in and they mummify them. They take everything out with like a fucking crochet hook thing. Um... um.
Yeah, I knew that those monkeys with the big old noses were gonna be on there. Cause like when I think of the an big ugly, yeah, when I think of an ugly monkey, that's the one I think of. They got their own version of like Magic Mike, where they're just shaking their noses. <laughs> yeah, it's really funny because like my great uncle has a nose that looks just like they that. They like helicopter their nose. <laughs> so like me and my cousin would always be like, like that's why he was like, oh his, my god, his nose looks like that. It's funny though that they like. Their schlongs are what they use to like show that they're angry. It's just like, <laughs> like Dragon Ball. Like, <laughs> I like how the zoos are like, oh, they're dot, they're dying. We, we can't hey, do it. It don't stop the ones that we've encountered, dude. There's a couple of them that oh we. Oh my god. We went to the zoo one time. Oh my god. Did we not film or like? I thought we were trying to. Well, it was before we started our channel, so like I don't know where that. This be. thing had a wife and a kid, and it ran up at us just straight beating. Going for beating, it. Beating, you know. And doing its teeth like. And doing its teeth. And not just like, ha ha, here it is, but like, ha ha, here it is. And the mom and the baby were in the back Terrified. just like. He's at it again. Oh no. You know? And he was like gritting his teeth and, and doing and the going thing. And at it. And like not, locking eyes yeah. with you. It was it was intimidating. Yes. But then our favorite I, It was be. even more intimidating when I got scolded for doing it back at him. Oh when God. the people at the zoo were like, put it away, sir. Stop. That's an animal. And I was like, so am I. Yeah. But the, the gibbon, the yellow gibbon, oh, or the golden uh, gibbon. The one that sucked like, on its thumb. He sucks his thumb and, and then he just, just like pulls Because you could throw it around. like food. They gave you food to like give the to the bananas. animals. And he would sit there and like suck his thumb catcher. and just... I love him. I want him. And he was so sad. He was like doing the sad face too. Like, oh, please yeah. tell me some cornflakes. Or I don't remember what. It, I think it was, it was bananas. bananas yeah. pieces. But, uh, yeah, he had a gimmick. He was a, y'all suckers. I'm, Sly. Yeah. Um, I love monkeys. Um, I do too. I, I would not, like, take in your finger and literally, like. He's a lamer, right? We learned. Get it out of here. No. Uh, Terrible. The blobfish I feel really, really bad for. Because yeah, I didn't know that. they put dirt on their name. They don't even actually look like that. But that's messed up to bring them up. Well, it'd be like fucking melting our faces and being like, ugh. Yeah. It's like, no shit. It's just, that's, It yeah. doesn't look like that oh. at all in, in its environment. And I didn't right. know that. I just thought it was a really ugly fish. Yeah, that's all fucked up. But that's the beauty of Casual Geographic. A man who knows how to not only... Dude, he was on it with the punchlines this yes. time. He had me rolling. That yeah. shit was funny. Yeah. Bravo to him for that. No, um, the always putting together these very informative, very entertaining videos that I feel like keep nature interesting, fresh, sometimes yeah. terrifying, sometimes yeah. cute. You never know what you're going to get with him. Another awesome storyteller. Uh, check out his Instagram. Check out his TikTok. And you should subscribe to his YouTube channel for sure. If you enjoyed our reaction to this, you can give us a like and subscribe to our channel. And what else can they do? Leave your recommendations in the comments on our Discord, hey. on our Twitch, or <clears throat> our Patreon. Yeah, we would appreciate that. Also, if you're into live streaming, we've got a live streaming um, schedule that's posted on the community tab. Just check that out and maybe you can hang out with us there. Yeah. Uh, but for this video, I think that's going to do, do it. it. See you guys. Bye.